A family dinner at the Stacy household is quite a production. That's because there are a lot of mouths to feed and schedules to juggle. But production is the family business, and it's what brought their two youngest children to them from halfway around the world. We had gone over to Russia with the Christian Arts Festival, and it was all to raise money for the orphans of St. Petersburg, Russia, and there was about 250 people from all over the world there, and we were part of a team with, from, with, from Crossroads doing some taping, and they were also singing the scroll, a musical Bruce had written in Russian with the Russian Philharmonic Orchestra and a Russian choir. It was shortly after the fall of the Iron Curtain, and few outsiders knew what lay behind. As Elaine discovered, there were deep needs. As she went to one orphanage, something inside her connected to that need, and a little girl named Elena. When uh, we went inside, Elena was standing at the top of the steps, and she was the first child I saw when I went to that orphanage. And she took me by the hand, and she was like my little guide around the, the orphanage. And I remember uh, kneeling down beside her little bed. There was like 16 beds in this room, and I remember just kneeling down, talking to her through the interpreter, and I just remember feeling that, that God spoke to my heart and he said, and I just remember thinking, how could you not have a mummy? How could you not have someone to love you? And I could be your mummy. And I know God put that in my heart. And, I, and I've never said that since, that God spoke to me, but I knew he spoke to me that she should be our little girl. How was another issue. Her husband, Bruce, wasn't initially on board, but among the hours of footage captured on that trip, was the image of that little girl, one that followed them home. We were told, you know, Russia was closed for adoptions, it wasn't possible. But Elaine was really determined, and uh, we brought this video back that Elaine had captured this, this little girl, and the more we thought about it, uh, the more we, and prayed about it, we thought, why not? Let's see if we can pursue yeah. this. Well, I knew right away. God had to work on Bruce's heart a bit. The image also captured the heart of their two children, Cheryl and Chris. I remember the TV. I remember seeing Elena's picture on the TV. Um, and we took a picture of the television still. Like we paused the VHS and took a picture and we printed that picture. Another world away, Elena was going on with life. It was a world Bruce would get to know. Thanks to the help of a Russian neighbor, they were able to lay the groundwork. The adoption itself would take place in Russia. So the plan was to complete the adoption in Russia, so I would become uh, this little girl's father in Russia and then kind of take our chances on coming home <laughs> and see if the Canadian government would kind of open their arms. Well, I ran out of money in about two weeks. The generosity of my interpreter, actually, uh, her mother-in-law had, had an old apartment that had uh, closed down, so I ended up staying there and they gave me an old coat so I, I was, wasn't conspicuous was wandering the streets. Too, it, was very cold. Cold, yeah. it was very cold. It was very cool. And, um, and so that's how I survived. During that time, he visited Elena every day. He also met a little boy named Alex. Yeah, the, the interpreter. interpreter would say, he'd be hugging my leg and saying, uh, and asking, you know, will you be my papa? Will you so, take me to Canada? Because yeah. they all knew she was going. Bruce was focused on getting Elena home. Meanwhile, Elaine and the kids had no idea when he would return or if Elena would be with him. I could hardly talk to Bruce. We could barely do faxes. They were just doing faxes, so uh, he would have to book it with the hotel, and it took two days to book a fax. And So I would just wait to get some news. I didn't know what was going on, and I was here a month by myself with the other two, and it was quite a, uh, an adventure. It wouldn't take long for Alex to follow. And so we sh separately showed his picture to Cheryl, and then to Chris and thought they might say no. But when we showed Cheryl the picture of Alex, she said, and said, what do you think about adopting this little boy? Yes, let's do it. And then when we showed Chris separately, yes, I want to do it, let's do it. Bruce made the trip this time with a shipment of aid and Bibles. He returned with some precious cargo. It was different, like finally have a dad, finally been rescued from an orphanage. It was very scary too. I didn't know what was happening, like we've never been on a plane, like that just going in a plane was like fascinating. I think I was just excited, I wasn't even scared at all, like I didn't cry at all, I just, I think I was just happy they were caring for me, they're, they loved me, I, like I was loved, I was actually being held, I guess it was just a nice feeling and I just like kind of, you know, just took in everything, oh I guess this is my new home. 
Their new home was a stark contrast to the one they came from. Although both say they don't have many memories of the orphanage, some things stayed with them. Many of these children would rock themselves to sleep every night. They kind of th literally throw themselves from side to side. And we were, it was explained to us that this is, uh, it, you know, is something that's characterized by these kids because they weren't hugged, they didn't have that mm -hmm. kind of affection, they were younger. So they always had to rock themselves mm -hmm. to sleep. So we, you, right through her adolescence, we would find Elena upstairs rocking and herself Alex back and forth well. like this. And he Alex as well. He kind of grew out of it. At six and seven, fitting into their new environment came with some challenges. As parents, you really don't know the history of these kids, so you're not you know, fully informed on what kind of baggage they're carrying. So in many ways, you just have to trust God to, you know, we would pray that God would just heal their hearts, whatever's, whatever's there, and that we were just a loving family. And I, and I, I think it was a family effort. Our, our uh, other two kids, uh, Cheryl and Christopher, of course, had to welcome them into the home. Christopher had to share his room with Alex. And uh, the novelty of a, a, you know, a new member of the family wears off pretty quickly when it's a, you know, a pesky six-year-old that's running around and stealing your stuff. Alex and Elena didn't speak English at first, though as kids, they could communicate through fun. Well, my sister and I always did little plays. She would, like, dress me up. There's many they They did a lot of stuff to us. Would dress up, do a little plays. My dad would come record it when we were ready. Their life seemed like a fairy tale rescued from a cold orphanage, brought to a loving home. But the real story was not as straightforward or happy. The younger years were, were obviously easier. Mm -hmm. And it was the teenage years that got difficult. And in those difficult times, we just would always remember that this was God's idea. <laughs> like, literally, we would say, Lord, this was your idea. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to see this through. Faith was always a part of the Stacy household. But it was something that Alex and Elena say they had to adopt for themselves. Well, we were put into a Christian home. We didn't decide. So I would have to say more now that I feel real. God's been real to me because I got to look back of what he's done in my life. My parents always told me he kind of led the way. Like he opened the doors for my mom and if it wasn't for him, I would have been here. Don't you Although not a fairy tale, their lives have taken some happy turns. Elena recently made a trip up the aisle and is starting a whole new chapter of life with her husband, Justin. It's very exciting. Well, I met the right man, so he changed me. He's a wonderful guy. It was a beautiful wedding. It was a special day for all the family those who had walked with her through many trials. It was wonderful. It was like, um, I felt like I had a little princess on my arm. Uh, She's so tiny. But knowing how far, uh, you know, she had come uh, from that orphanage in, in Russia and, and that we played a part of that. And um, it, it was a very emotional uh, ride for us. It's a trip Alex would like to take too. I am looking for a wife. That's my future goal. Alex and Elena say they are still amazed to be where they are today. They've never forgotten where they've come from and the different life they would have had in Russia had it not been for their parents. They're kind, patient, um, just very helpful, sharing. Just everything about them is warming. Because I can appreciate my parents and what they've done for me and how much work they've gone through to get us here and just it's amazing just to think what God can do for anyone. There's a lot more story to be written for both of them. Though they're on their own now, they are no longer orphans. They say they want to visit Russia one day, though their roots are in Canada and in the heart of a family who opened their door. If someone would have asked me before we had adopted, could you love those kids as if you were your own? Could it be the same kind of everlasting love? I, I think I may have perhaps been doubtful. But you know, God does a work in our, in our hearts that changes us. And he certainly opened our hearts for these two beautiful kids. That's how God works as well. You know, he, he opens his, his world uh, to us and, and we become part of his family when we say yes to God.
I know God does put opportunities in front of us for us to do, so do something. And so look for those windows and just go for it. In Kilbride, Ontario, Denise Lottie, 100 Huntley Street.